We believe that by empowering women for change across Africa, as well as providing them opportunities to access employment and entrepreneurship, it will help them. It will help. The, it will help us to be able to achieve a 50-50 percent uh, male to female ratio in the technology space in Nigeria, in Africa, and the world at large. The Women Texas Open Day, which is the reason why we're here today, is a monthly virtual program organized for women across Africa to learn about leveraging the power of technology to start and advance their careers and also create businesses that are technology enabled. The Open Day is an opportunity for women to interact with other women who have built careers or businesses in technology over the years, who will share their personal experiences speak about possible career paths in technology and business opportunities, and help the women who are here today appreciate the importance of acquiring digital and deep tech skills in this digital age. We want to take this opportunity to appreciate Microsoft for collaborating with us to bring this initiative to life. And we look forward to impacting and improving the lives of women across Africa. Once again, I would like to say a big thank you and I appreciate everyone for being here today. As you're here today, listening to us and hoping to commence your journey to becoming a woman in tech. I wish and I hope that we have a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Over to you, Joe. Thank you very much, Diwira. In case you're just joining us, that was Diwira Oladipo. She's the Executive Director at tech for dev Welcome once again. Um, there's an attendance sheet on the chat session. Please fill it in. We'd like to know where you're coming from, where you're joining us from, and your name. Just a little information. It's not really long, so that we can keep you up to date on the program activities for this year. Like Dora, like rightly said, the Women Textiles Initiative is meant for women. There are so many women out there that do not know about the opportunities in tech and will doing this to educate you and let you know how to assess these opportunities. Women are underrepresented in STEM, really, in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics field. And as a result, there's a significant smaller pool of female tech talents, and this restricts the potentials of Africa's technology sector. I believe the future lies in technology, and that is why we are having the Women Texas Initiative to reach 5 million women across Africa by 2030. And with you on board, we know we can achieve this. All you just have to do is to um, participate in any of our program activities for the year, and you'll be one of the 5 million women that will be trained. Um, so now, let me just give you a brief background about the Nigerian Women Texters. Before we go into the Women Texters Initiative, the plan for the next 10 years, Nigerian Women Texters started in 2018 with a vision to train 2,400 women with coding skills and deep tech skills, and we're able to achieve that number last year. And the good news, let me just tell you, I'm one of the beneficiaries of Nigerian Women Texters. Like every other one of people that are here, some of the women that are here, I started out my career without, I didn't even know where to go to after my NYC. I was looking for opportunities to advance my career. I was looking for a job. And then I got wind of the career path training organized by GIZ. I participated in the training. And during the career path training, we were told about the Women Texas Initiative for Nigeria. I enrolled and I learned website development. During, my, during the training program, we were grouped into several small groups. And I learned how to um, build my website and I passed the internship assessment, I got an internship, and today I landed my job. This is not my first job, this is actually my second job after the Women Texas training. So for people like me in 2018 that are looking to start off, you don't know where to go to, you don't know what opportunities are available for you, you are in the right place, and tonight we'll be learning about those opportunities. So for the next 10 years, we intend to take it to all over Africa, in Nigeria, we're able to um, implement it across 12 states in Nigeria. We implemented the Metextas Initiative in Ondo, Oyo, Kwara, um, uh, Adamawa, Delta, Imo, Kaduna, Lagos, Oshun, Ogun, several states. And now we're taking it to different countries in Africa over the next 10 years. But for this year, we hope to train 10,000 women with technical skills and deep tech skills um, in program pro, um, products the design, product management, software development, software engineering, 
um, cyber security, data science, and artificial intelligence. And for this year, we aim to train 10,000 women across Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Egypt. So you are in the right place and there are several opportunities. As the program goes by, we will let you know on how these activities are going to play out. So if you're just joining us, there's a link in the comments section. Please fill, those, fill the link with your details so that I can keep you up to date on the program activities for this year. So right now we'll be having a fireside chat between Dura Oladipo. Dura is our executive director at tech for dev and Adeze Shokan. Adeze is the director of design and strategy adventures platform. So Dura will moderate this session and over to you, Dura. Hello. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Joy. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm so excited to have Adeze here uh, today with us, just sharing our experience as a woman in tech. I mean, uh, over the course of the next few minutes, we're going to be listening to Adeze. I have my own personal experience sitting here as a woman in tech, but it's going to be super exciting to hear from Ada. Just talk to us about what it has, what, what the career has been, what our career path has been, thoughts for our career has been in technology, uh, what the challenges have been, you know, what the advantages are, the pros and cons of being a woman in tech, what opportunities really exist for women in tech. It would be super exciting to hear that. But before we go into the order of the day, I would like to just quickly introduce Adeze. So Adeze is, uh, like Joy had rightly said, um, she leads the design uh, strategy and quality assurance team at Ventures Platform. Uh, she's a fanatic for economic prosperity in Africa. She believes you know, prosperous Africa triggered by innovation and, entrep and entrepreneurs. Uh, so what we what basically do, what she does basically at Ventures Platform is where they create strategies for entrepreneurs, development partners, big corporates, and government institutions critical to the growth of digital economies. She designs, coordinates, she designs and coordinates the implementation of programs and policies that enhance entrepreneurship, talent development, infrastructure support, data analysis, investment, and regulatory support. She has significant experience in Nigeria's innovation and uh, technology ecosystem and has worked with diverse stakeholders such as the World Bank, Google, British Council, uh, USAID, uh, embassies, as well as selected Nigerian government institutions, all in the bid to promote Nigeria's digital economy and entrepreneurship ecosystem. She facilitates workshops and trains different stakeholders on problem solving, critical thinking, and logical thinking, as well as she also helps to develop sustainable and, and successful business models. She has a bachelor's degree and a master's in political science and economics and an African studies from Illinois State University and UCLA respectively. She, and she's an Obama leader fellow. She's happily married and she's the mother of two strong boys. Uh, welcome to our fireside chat today, uh, Adeze. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm really, really glad I'm here. Thank you. Okay, uh, just jump into the other of the day is, I mean, just reading through your bio and talking about the fact that you have a background in politics and economics and uh, political science and economics and African studies. I mean, if I were anybody in this room, the first question would be, how did you even move <laughs> from, like, political and African studies to being a woman in tech? It feels like they're like, this is here and then this is on the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. So I think that that would be my very first question would be, it'd be exciting to know how you make that transition. And I mean, what really sort of like interested you or made you gain an interest in joining the tech industry? Thank you very much. That's a very brilliant question. And um, I get asked a lot that question and I'm always happy to share why. Um, it was in my economics class, SS3. Uh, my dad trained me to be, or my, they were supporting me to be a medical doctor. I'm sure many people grew up like that, where your dad or your mom wanted you to be a lawyer or an engineer. I was on the doctor's side and I went to a class and my teacher drew on the board the richest countries and the poorest countries. And Africa was at the bottom. And I just, something inside my stomach started to turn. Um, it didn't sit right with me and I decided I was going to be go on this, you know, whole path of, you know, making Africa go back to the top. In fact, my mission is that um, an African country, Nigeria to be precise, hopefully, preferably, 
will be one of the top 10 countries have been rated by the Human Development Index. The Human Development Index is a United Nations index that they used to rate developed countries according to you know, standard of living and purchasing power and things like that. There's no African country currently that is top 10, and that shows that we're really backward. And so since my SS3 class was many years ago, till so now, we're still not anywhere top 10. And so I started on that mission to you know, try and do something about it. So I thought the best route to go would be to study political science. I mean, anybody talking about development work, the first thing you think about is politics, right? So that, that happened for me. And by God's grace, I was able to go abroad to school, not because my parents were rich. And, and there's a reason why I'm mentioning this, because you see why it's important as I talk through this session. Um, but because I had the vision, I wanted to go to the best and understand, really get, you know, good education and, you know, see opportunities and expose myself. So I worked hard and I was able to go to school abroad and I could change my major, my course to from science to political science. I wanted to understand how African countries could be wealthy. And so that's how I set out. So I set out when I came back, I thought I would, I, be, I did work in government for a bit work to development partners and I realized that they're doing they're doing the best that they can uh, to move the country forward. But then I realized that we are in the industrial revolution, right? There are four there are four revolutions that happened when the fourth industrial revolution, right? The first industrial revolution was about mechanization and, and steam power. We saw cars and the steam engine. The second was um, around um, automation the third, and assembly lines. The third was set to get introduced to the computer system and robotic system. And the fourth industrial revolution, looking at IoT and, and what have you. And Africa, kind of, were actually in the second, or somewhere in between the first and second industrial revolution, where the rest of the world are in the fourth industrial revolution. And with every revolution, the reason why it's called revolution is a chance for every nation to maximize the uh, revolutionary period to become an inventor or, or an innovator to you know boost economic prosperity and i figured if this is the industrial revolution this is tech and how about i use my skills so i'm not your typical um tech person i i don't know how to code so i didn't i tried i, I tried to learn how to code i really <laughs> did I, I, I took classes the best level was computer class so i actually took classes to learn how to code and i failed because it's not my strength but I knew what technology could do. So I figured, okay, I have strength in other areas. I'm going to use my strength around policy, around coordination, around stakeholder engagement, engaging government, engaging development partners to get support to support tech development. And so that's actually the role I play in the tech industry. And that's how I'm here. So I'm in tech, not because of, you know, because it's tech, everybody's saying tech. I'm tech for a purpose. I'm on a mission, right? Because for me, tech is a catalyst for development. Um, in the country, or on, the, on the continent, and we are in the digital revolution, in the fourth industrial revolution. And so, so that's how I, I, I came here. I figured if we're going to get Africa up, um, I then thought government and development partners will need some help, and they will need help from innovators and tech talents, like like everyone sitting in this room, that will build another Paystack or another Facebook or another um, Tribal Greek or Farm Crowley, another technology that would help some of the, solve some of the biggest problems that were facing on the continent. And so that's how I moved and I found myself, I was actually recommended because of my skill sets, not because I have any tech skills. I got recommended, I had boosted my skills. I, I was really good in project management and coordinating, speaking and fundraising. And they said they needed those skill sets in tech. So I realized that tech wasn't just about coding, which is very important, you need the coders, but you also need people that were the enablers of tech. And that's how I found myself in the tech space, and I, I just decided to stay there. Not me. Okay, uh, interesting. I mean, just talking about being like uh, coding and being like an enabler in tech, uh, I just wanted you to share a bit because I'm sure that a lot of women here will be curious. I mean, uh, what's the difference between coding and being an enabler of tech, right? What what sort of <laughs> career path exists for a woman like me? Why should I even yeah. want to partake in the technology yeah. ecosystem? An example is when we started out the Women Tech Stars at Tech for Dev, I mean, it was just bound out of the mission for the fact that for every time it is that you walk into a technology company, software development company, hardware and infrastructure, the bulk of the people that you see are men. Yeah. And this starts right from even being in school. 
I mean, yeah. think about, I went to a local university in Nigeria. I went to Obafemi Aulo University and I studied economics. However, I had a lot of friends that were in engineering. And it just seemed like for every person that I knew in an engineering class, and so why did you study? Why did you study economics? Did you pick economics? I did pick economics actually. Why didn't you pick a STEM field? Well, at that point in time, so my story is a very complicated story. <laughs> I wanted to be. Uh, so my dad is a doctor. I come from a family of medical sciences, and it was just natural that I would want to be like a doctor, right? But when I got to SS one, uh, I entered chemistry for some really weird, <laughs> and I could not. I yeah. couldn't. So at some point in time, I was like, I was just going to, economics was my strongest subject. I had a fantastic secondary school economics teacher who told me that if I loved economics at this point, I could go study that at the university. And that was like an eureka moment for me. And I just like, phew, went to study economics and that was it. Yeah. However, yeah. there was this, I don't know, I had this inclination to also, the bulk of my friends when I was in university were actually guys in engineering. And for every guy that I knew in engineering, so let me give you an example. I had a friend in electrical and electronics engineering. There were 120, there were eight girls in their class. The rest of them were guys. I had another friend that was in metrological and materials engineering. I even think the more complex it sounds, they had a hundred and what? 109 guys in their class. There was no girl. And then it just got me thinking, to say, I mean, is it that women hate engineering? Is there something going on that we don't know about? Yeah. And then I was fortunate enough to find myself in uh, a technology company, a technology solutions company. And it is the same, the way it's played out in the university is the same way it is playing out in the technology companies right now, where on an engineering team, for example, there are like 30 guys and there's like one lady on a product management team, for example, there are like five guys and there's one lady. So it starts to it it you, you start it starts to to make you think and say, is it is it that what is wrong? Is it that women are scared to be a part of the technology? Is it like people are confused? They don't really know what it's about. And I mean, there in, there are like immense opportunities that exist within the technology the technology ecosystem. I will say for sure that I know right now that the technology industry in Nigeria is currently one of the only industries that if you are, if you were to join the, if you were to be a part of that industry, you don't need to know anyone to earn well, to be able to gain some form of financial independence for yourself. So if these sort of opportunities or platforms exist, why are women not particular? Is it like we don't yeah. know? And for me, that's really my next question to you is, what are the possible career paths? Why do you think that women are not actively participating in this industry? I mean, just to be sure that we're not speculating. Okay, um, just to maybe answer the first question of why women are not participating. Um, there are lots of reports and research that's, that's been done on this. Um, and Tech about is, is a good place to, to, to go and see one of the reports they did about women in tech in Nigeria. And they, 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 they show that there's an increasing interest just now that you can see women attempting uh, to to dare, you know, the current notion of is a, is a man field and, and are taking you know steps and be, becoming founders of company tech companies or they are actually coding and, and they're coding from here for the rest of the world. So it's just now that we're beginning to see that, but the numbers are still small, you're very correct. And there are a couple of reasons. One STEM wasn't usually the field that we saw our parents encouraging us to. I mean, in, sci in the science space, the best that we're encouraged to do was to be a doctor. But you, you, you couldn't see people in, on this other side of, of engineering and, and technology and math, right? Um, yeah. It's and, and subconscious, it's not like they, they came and said, okay, women, it's just that we went encouraged. There, there was nobody came and said, women, you should not do tech because you still had eight people you know, we had, I had I had friends, women, about be small that were in, in the tech field or engineering classes. So nobody said women couldn't. There was not just a lot of women applying um, for these roles, and and they were not encouraged. I want to believe that there was not a lot of encouragement. It's just now that they are now STEM education for women that is happening now, but that wasn't happening a few years ago. It was mostly the guys, and the guys were self-learning. They were learning themselves. They were 
when they talk about engineering, we knew that he was a guy. I mean, somehow everybody just thought he was a guy that should be, you know, in that. But I grew up with a lot of, I grew up with a different um, experience. I grew up with lots of women getting PhDs in engineering. So in my own circle, it was quite different. Like my family encouraged, or my, my environment encouraged a lot of women to participate. But I know in other cultures, it's not the same thing. So there needs to be a lot of work done to encourage um, a lot of young women to to participate in this, to expose them to all the fields and figure out which ones um, where you have strengths. And you find out that there are lots of women that actually have natural abilities with coding or sure. or just working in the tech, tech space. So I don't think there's a lot of exposure to the tech fields, um, to, to young women, and that needs to, that needs to change. Um, in terms of the types of roles that you can see, um, there's, I, I like to say the STEM, so there's a science, tech, the engineering, the, there's the math, there's data analytics now that's, that's there. And it's, data analytics is not just related to tech alone, it's just like now, there's, because we're in the fourth in, um, industrial revolution, we're in the tech digital age now, data, is almost, data analysis is almost uh, synonymous to tech. Um, but it's a skill set that can apply to any industry um, as well. So you could, you could have the core tech um, career path where you're actually a developer, you're a software developer. You could be a hardware developer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, you build products and you know, um, and you could, you could be a soft uh, skills person. So what that means is you're not tech, like you don't have the core code skills, coding skills, but you have things that they need. <laughs> So I could be a great marketer, but I'm in the tech space. I met somebody who's, who loves fashion. She has no clue about fashion or sewing clothes. She doesn't know anything about that. Like she doesn't know how to sew, but she knows how to spot a good fashion outfit. And her role is to, to market, right? And fundraise. So you could have the skill set of fundraising or marketing, and that's relevant today in the tech space. Tech, you could also be an entrepreneur. So I'm not necessarily, um, I have great managerial skills. I don't necessarily know how to code. I can understand good code when I see it, but your job is to start a startup and found a company. And there are lots of examples of Nigerian women founders, African women founders, or you, so you could either be an entrepreneur founding a company, you could be like a, 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 a Cheryl Sandberg, like oh, she's a CEO of Facebook. So you could be like her, right? Or, you know, like me, you know, where we don't necessarily know tech, or you could actually be a tech person. Um, so, but you need to figure out what your strengths are. And that's where it starts, right? I like to say, what's my vision, right? What's the vision that I have? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So what's the vision that I have? I had a vision to take Africa up, development, let people improve their lives. I picked tech as the best way for that to happen. When I came down, I said, what are my strengths? My strengths are not coding. I can't. I tried it. I did try it and I can't. But I know my others and I can use this in this space. Then I went and I continued to boost my skills and I'm practicing. I was listening to the video and somebody said, I, I didn't get a job. And when there's no job at the time, uh, you know, you, you want to keep improving your skills. You want to even do free work because you want to have a portfolio of, of what you can do. And when the opportunity comes, thank God for even platforms that allows you to even do freelance type opportunities. So beyond the nine to five jobs, or um, platforms like Fiverr or you know Upwork help you to access clients around the world, right? Um, so know the vision, where, where you see yourself, what you want to achieve, build your skill set, and know thyself, you know what you can do, and then go for it. Start implementing um, your skill set. Okay. Uh, thank you, Adeze. There is, um, yeah. before we go right in, please, if you have any questions, uh, I think this would be a great time to drop them in the chat box as we'll be taking questions just right after. Uh, we're done with this session. So if you have any questions around uh, starting a career or building a business uh, or a technology, technology enabled business, right? You can start, you can just drop them in the chat section. Any, any questions directly for Adebe, uh, you feel very, you feel like you are 
you're a mirror image of Ada on the other side, just seeing yourself riding her, and you want to ask her some very specific questions, this would be a great time. Uh, I mean, there's an argument, and I'll just go right straight back because of uh, time. There's an argument that says that women are not natural pushers, right? Women do not push for things uh, naturally. And I would just say that that is true <laughs> based on data. And let me give you an example. We are checked for them. There are a number of programs we run. I mean, Women Tech Stars is one of the programs focused solely on women. We have other programs that we've run over the course of the years that are focused on men and women. For every time we roll out an application for a dual program, which is men and women, we tend to get more like 4x more application than when we roll out programs or than when we roll out the Women Texas program, for example, or Nigerian Women Texas program at, 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 at that point. And when you look at the percentages, you have about 70% of the men applying, 30% or less of women applying. A lot of inquiries we get at Tech for Dead that are related to women tech stars are actually men asking questions for their wives, sisters, cousins that are female to say, oh, uh, is there a way my wife could join or is there a way that my sister could be a part of this? And I'm just curious to say, if women are not natural pushers, if we do not push ourselves, right, at what point would we be able to, and this is just a digression, right, at what point would we be able to effectively participate? in the tech industry. I can say for sure, because I do work in this industry, that the industry is a bit intense. And you need people yeah. who are self-motivators, you need people who can think on their feet, who nobody is necessarily having to push you around or tell you what yeah. to do, to be able to support yeah. That's all. Yeah. And I just want yeah. to hear your thoughts around this, really. Yeah, that's a, you hit the nail on the spot. Confidence and audacity and courage, just undeniable resolve to get things done is a rare trait that um, it doesn't come to everybody naturally and and women need to be encouraged to understand that the, you can have all the skill sets right you mm -hmm. can go to all the programs and learn and learn and learn and learn and you just be learning and you just be on yourself and you're just at home right what the true test of your knowledge or your very existence on earth is your ability to get stuff done and the ability to get stuff done is not beans <laughs> you will need to push through you will need to push through you need to push you need to get the consequences yeah there are places you will go to and you will see literally all men or there are places that even whether it's even not it's not even i don't even like to say it's about men or women actually even men have the same issues like it is a trait of courage and it's not gender Courage is not gender specific, yeah. right? Courage is something that everybody needs. Everybody needs courage. And so I think they are even answering the question, right? Like if we believe that there's a lot of confidence issues amongst women for good reason, we've not been encouraged. Most of the women that you see today that are very bold is because they came from backgrounds. Uh, they were exposed you know, to players where they had to learn how to be daring not everybody majority of the women don't have that your thoughts to clean the kitchen or do something very secondary and small don't dream too big because you have to get married and if you want your husband not to feel uh, dominated by you or insecure you have to tone it down and and nelson madela's quote tells us no i'm not i'm not gonna belittle myself so you can feel better about yourself right and if you're a single person here um, a criteria for marriage for a man that, that wants to marry you is a man has to embrace all that you are. The man has to push you to be the best that you can be. That, that's my husband and I'm proud to say that, right? Mm -hmm. if, if anybody feels like they're, they're going to be little because you're going to shine, then that person is not your, your spouse, right? And if you are married and you have that kind of situation, then there needs to be a conversation, really. Um, unless because unless you're saying that you, it's by choice that you choose not to um, embrace because not everybody will need to make those kinds of audacious moves right but there are some that you need to make those audacious moves there's this movie that i love so much called hidden figures and if you're not seen it you should go and see it i think it was i feel that movie should be there should be like a whole movement around that movie to inspire women everywhere but i think there needs to be more motivational type inspirational programs to 
expose women to the to the, the the different women around the world that are doing great things and programs like this would help to boost that confidence and boost the courage you're right even doing the cop applications or the applications for programs that, that we design here you have to have a separate type of strategy to get women like you have to go in specific types of groups and speak a certain language to just get women right i think that should change i think that if there are opportunities and you put it everywhere you should grab onto those those opportunities everything that you've got in the hidden figures movie if you look at those three women right the the three of them had to deal with there was one that had to deal with the issue of men there's another that had to do with the issue of race right so there are challenges everywhere and with each one she had to stand before the judge she did her homework stood before the judge and explained why she should be given admission to go and study engineering which was an all-white school and a school where you had majority of the guys were boys, the perspective were boys. So it does require courage and there needs to be more platforms that inspire people to be courageous because without courage, regardless of how skilled you are, you will not get very far. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I'm just curious, I mean, and I, I'm sure that maybe a couple of women in this room who are married and also have kids uh, will be curious, I mean, it says that you're one of two beautiful boys, wonderful boys, <laughs> and married. And uh, how do you sort of juggle your career and being a mother and a wife? Um, time management is, is a very principal, right, principal uh, skill that you have to, to learn. I know that I'm a mother, so I, I like to say I'm an octopus. I have eight legs. So even beyond my career, I, I, I run a business, I'm an entrepreneur as well. Um, and I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and I do it, I mentor people. I do a bunch of, I do eight things. So that's why I said I'm a mother, I'm an octopus. And at first it was crazy. Like I didn't know, when I actually got married and I had kids, I, I was almost feeling, I was with a group of people that felt like that, uh, you need to tone it down, just focus. So I, I told them, I actually, I lost my self-esteem. I was just with my children, my two boys, my, my first son then. And then I, then I got into another group of, and I started to see other women that were literally pregnant with their babies and their work. <laughs> and their reason is not that they're trying to prove a point. It's like, I'm on a mission. Again, your purpose drives you, right? So um, I'm a woman on a mission and I have a job to do on the earth. And if I don't do it, lives and destinies will stall. So the earth is waiting for me. So I'm not going to use anything else as an excuse. Does it mean that I neglect my family? No, because I'm going to be held accountable for my children. Success for me isn't just career success. I want to be successful in my career so my children can be proud of me. But at the same time, I want to also make sure that I'm there for my kids. So I'm very, very good with my time. So after five o'clock, I try not to do anything. I head home, right? And I help I still love my kids. I see what they're doing. I dedicate two hours every day after work to make sure that I'm attending to their homework and I'm there for them. There are times that meetings can come up and things can come up. I make sure I communicate to my kids. I know I'm always here for you at this time. But because of this meeting, I'm not going to be here. Because mommy has to do this. And they understand. My kids actually understand. Right? <laughs> and whenever I get time, I actually make up for it. And that way you're teaching them because they are boys. I'm also letting them know how, you know, you deal with women. That the fact that mommy is mommy doesn't mean that mommy can't work. So when they get married too, they know how to deal with their wives and allow them shine. Or when they have friends and girls, they don't discriminate. Right? Same even if you have girl, girl, girl children, you want to show the role model balance. So for me, it, it was a struggle in the beginning, but I had to put time out. I had to tell my, I have a boss, I speak to have a boss, so my boss knows that I have to kids. so I have to say, sir, I, I really can't do things at this time, but there are times because I'm also committed to the position that on those rare occasions, I might have to do things after my hours, but I make sure I communicate. I also have a good husband, so I cannot always say that it's only time management, right? I have a husband that is very understanding, and I know that's not the case from, from, from many women, um, understandably so. I know of a woman friend of mine who didn't have a good support but she tried there were times she was up at night again it was the vision that drove her when the husband would sleep she would be up at night <laughs> right working um and, and on weekends when she's done cooking and the little time she has she's, she's working right so you have to figure out what works for you 
create create that time. There are times you may have to be up at odd hours of the night because you want to make this dream come true. Because when the dream comes true, then you would rest. Um, but yeah, so time management is very key. Courage, the audacity to to not um, to not stop until something happens. Sometimes you may need to take that even one year break. Yeah, it might not be that you may be able to do everything. Right. Sometimes you may say, okay, I'm going to take the first five years or ten years of my kids' life, and I'm just going to be with them. And maybe reading, I'll be, you know, going to school, reading, doing some side projects, learning. And then after ten years, I'm going to now go fully into my career. You could be like that, and, and that that's why that works. But the thing is, have a plan, right? Have a vision, have a plan. And balance it so that all your hearts, no, no one is, uh, not one is suffering. Wonderful. I think I'll just roll quickly into the, my last question. Uh, it's been an amazing time speaking with you, Ade. Uh, yeah. My final question really is: if you had, if you could give one like word of advice to any woman who is trying to start their career in tech, what would that be? The only advantage I think that women have over men is that when we do stuff, we really do it well. Um, we really do it well. Um, they, 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 I think that there's an innate gift in the field that God gave us that we're able to do and see things that men can see. Even the, the tech world will tell you that you're going to get a co-founder, manager, or CEO type person. It's best that that person is a woman, right? So you have the ability to see what men can see you have, you have the ability to manage and coordinate and make things happen right mm-hmm. um, that's why there are some big men that will say it's my wife oh my wife has been the one pushing me like she's my powerhouse you know so there, there are things that we can do we are actually go-getters by by nature no matter what it is that you decide to do so i want you to own that own who you are right and don't belittle yourself for anybody. Don't reduce yourself because you want somebody else not to feel bad. No, right? Um, it's who you are. I'm not saying you should go and be proud and be putting it in everybody's face, but own who you are. Have a sense of purpose and direction for your life. What is that thing that you want to achieve? Let it be very clear. Literally see yourself. Then the hurdles I'll need to cross to get there. Do I need to learn a skill? Do I need to work with, you know, get experience? Or do I need to watch after my kids for a bit before I dabble? What are your own hurdles, right? And then tackle them one by one. So that's what I would say. Uh, be courageous, be bold, do not fear. <laughs> have clarity of vision, know your skill set, know the hurdles you have to cross and cross them. Wonderful, thank yeah. you so much, Adesia. I mean, to the women out here, I mean, be courageous for me it's one big thing you just said which is own who you are i mean that is super important if you're going to do anything in this life i be it small or big you need to have to understand who you are and just own who you are i mean it might take additional sacrifices like the story adese gave of a friend but if you have to make those sacrifices you need to make them for the future. So thank you so, so much, Adese. It's been a wonderful time speaking with you. Thank you for sharing of your experience. Thank you, thank you for encouraging the women out thank here that you. it is not so difficult to be a woman in tech. You literally can be anything you want to be as a woman. You just need to set your mind to it. Uh, there are no excuses. Being married is not an excuse. Having kids yeah. is not an excuse. You can yeah. really do whatever it is you want to do as long as you put your mind to it. And the world is literally yeah. waiting at the it is the world is your oyster as as much as it is i totally 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 agree with a lot of things that Adesi has said here around just even if you want to, men are looking for women they're looking for like you said women <laughs> founders right people who are good at me women are natural managers right we're natural mm-hmm. managers we're people who just get it on my team in my other life job right the women mm-hmm. on those teams are high flyers like yeah. I can literally give things to the women and go to bed without yeah. having to look over their shoulders. Uh, it's, it's just been amazing to just hear you speak about these things. Thank you so much, Adeze. Uh, there are a couple of questions for you. Uh, okay. I'm just trying to sort of like streamline the questions uh, because of time. Um, so I think this first question is from, I mean, Tolo Animi, who says, uh, she, she says, thank you for this webinar. I have no interest. I have no knowledge at all in the technology field 
but I'm interested in knowing more about it. Where do I start from? I mean, I'm just trying to group the questions together. Uh, I will skip a first question and come back to it. Um, Esther also says she's inspired and she's glad to be here. She has no knowledge in tech. She wants to know where to start from. It's something okay. the career path she's really interested in. Uh, Marilyn also talks about, uh, you're so right about not having courage, but I've decided to take that bold step. I'm going to tech. My question is, for me who is coming into tech, where do I start from? So we have a lot of questions on where do I start from? What's next for me, you know, beyond this now that I've heard all of this, I'm charged and I've learned to be courageous and I want to just go ahead and forge ahead. What do I do? What's the next step for me? Okay. Um, so for where do you start? Like in my case, I had to go and take, yeah, because you don't know, I'm guessing you don't know whether you should do core tech, so whether coding, um, or management, whether you want to found a company or work in one, the best way is to go and learn first. And, and that's, that's how you would know what your strengths are. So for me, I went and I took close classes. I took Java, right? And I failed and I didn't like it. I didn't want to have anything to do with it, right? I, I don't like to fail. <laughs> so it's not my strength. It's not like it's my strength. Mm -hmm. And I failed because it's, it's okay to fail and try again. And, so for me, I knew that it was not me. Like, I never went back. Even though I do encourage people to learn basic coding, so I can do basic websites using WordPress, I can do something small ahead. But not that I'll be coding, I'll just be putting things that they've been putting things together. I can do that one. But coding, I'll be, ah, no, 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 I can't even look. I can't stand it. Web can't stand blood sometimes. I can't stand it. But I like the end product. So you have to try and take some classes first to see, okay, do I actually want to be coding? I have friends that work in Google today and Facebook coding. And that's all, that's what they want to do. They don't want to manage anything. They just want to sit behind their desk and use play with codes. And that's fine. Their friends that work from Nigeria for the world, right? I have a friend who's working for an Asian company and she's coding. She just comes and put music and code her herself with me. That's okay. There are people who know that they don't have the space, but they like what tech can do. So you could do impact work. You could do NGO work, you could run an NGO that is training kids, you could run an NGO that's training women, right? You could, you could, you know, found a company. So if you actually want to start a company, you could be an entrepreneur. So if you decide which one you want to do, you could go and volunteer in some or work, try and work in one and learn. And then you figure out, okay, where are my strengths? Where can I? And then from there, I think the paths will sort of align as you go. But the first step is to learn, learn, learn. Um, yeah, in terms of courage, I'm glad that you are pumped up. The person has said they are courage, they are, they are very courageous now. They are, but they are, they are, they'll be there will be tests for that courage, by the way. So as you said it, get ready. <laughs> but you just do it afraid, right? Um yeah. So I don't know oh. if I answer that question and where do I start? Yeah, you you have and I mean the net the other question was really you spoke a bit, which is so interesting, around what the person had said. It's up by me and she had said, I've been learning JavaScript but I cannot comprehend it. I've <laughs> checked my HTML and CSS though. I'd really love to code but I don't understand it. And then she it's also the same similar line of question to say, Okay, is there really a career path for me in tech? If I can't code, right? And um, I mean yeah, it's there because if you can't code, you can't offer any service. You know, people that want that use all these coding languages are offering a service. They, they are going to create something beautiful that somebody will use and pay for. People pay for value. So nobody's going to pay for bad code that doesn't work. So if you want to try again, um, but for me, my advice is if it's not working, it's not working. Um, what are your other skill sets? And the, and the way, the best way to figure out your other skill sets, what I did for myself recently is, and I do this every year, I look back in my life and I think about what have I done in the past that people actually praised me for? That said, oh, wow, you really did, you really did well with this. And I realized that I did a policy, I did a blog where I talked about policy and it went viral, people were talking about it. I did, I designed an intervention, I coordinated an intervention, people were like, wow, this was really good. So think about the things that you did in the past that people really applauded. And, and that helps you say, okay, um, maybe this is a, a strength that I can, I can build on. And then you can start learning and, and, and growing from there. Don't belittle any skill that you have. Trust me, every passion and every talent can earn money. Um, I was told that I, the reason I was learning Java was because they told me that I can make plenty money being a developer, which is true, but it was hard for me. <laughs> so, but there are other ways that you can, there are other skill sets that can actually um, get you.
Okay, uh, we will see a couple more questions, but we'll not be able to take the questions because of time. However, for the people who've asked questions also around, like, what do I do? Where do I start from? You know, uh, somebody had mentioned something around uh, uh, thinking about design and what's what design path, where do they start from for the design path? That is why the Women Texas That's program is here for you. Uh, yeah. We provide, we do provide some level of uh, advisory career advisory before you start out the program to help you identify what pathway you know will be you you could be interested in i mean there are tons of pathways there's product design there is software development yes. there, there is yes. product management uh there is cyber security there is data right there is there there's machine learning so it depends on whatever area suits your where you have, like Ada had said, the air, you need to first do a self-evaluation. And that's what that our mini career advisory session would help do, to sort of like help you think through what strengths you have. Because it's important that you're able to think through the strengths and then you're working in the place of your strength. And it's not just some boring job you get up to every day and it's just because you're trying to make money. The people who last in certain job lines are people who actually have a passion for what it is that they do beyond the money. So uh, yes, we would be providing more information. I'm sure that Joy will be able to provide more information as we get this going forward. Uh, also, we we'll have uh, patients who will be speaking shortly, just telling us about her experience with women tech stars and sort of where she is today from a uh, career standpoint. And at that point in time, too, we might be able to see our mirror image in patients that she speaks through. But uh, for now, thank you so much, Adeze. We're super grateful. We appreciate you spending time to speak with us today. Uh, I don't know if, and I don't know if I can open this up to say, uh, if that's okay by you. I mean, if people want to connect with you or they want okay. to ask you more questions, what would be the best way uh, for them to do that? Um, so you can send me an email at shokonadeze, shokonadeze at gmail.com. Um, you can also send me a message on LinkedIn or Twitter. It's Adeze Shokon. So, um, yeah, so if I see your message, I will join us to respond. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Adeze. We're very grateful. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, okay. Over to you, Joy. Thank you so much, Adesia and Deborah. I just hope this session wouldn't end. It was very, very interesting. And I believe the attendees have learned a lot from both of you. Thank you very much. And in case you're just joining in, that was Adesia Shokon and Dura Oladipo. Adesia Shokon is the, the a director of design and strategy at Ventures Platform, while Dura Oladipo is the executive director at tech for dev so I'll just do a brief recap. Adesa said tech is a catalyst for development. And really, if you don't know where to start from, you are in the right place. I heard, I saw several questions, I read several questions. People were asking, how do I start? I'm interested in this tech of the thing, but how do I start? You are in the right place. Adesa studied political science and government, but today she's a director of design and strategy. I studied physics, today I'm a program associate. and. I, I implement tech focus initiatives at my place of work. So you're welcome. And someone asked, um, someone asked about um, the where to start from. She said she started starting with, oh sorry, let me just quickly check the question. Figma, sometimes it go, but at the point, she doesn't know if there's a design, if she could learn design through the project. Yes, there's, there's an opportunity for you to learn product design. So for this first year, I mentioned earlier that we plan to train 5 million women across Africa over the next 10 years. But for the first year, we'll be focusing on five learning tracks, data science and artificial intelligence engineering, product management, product design, cyber security, and software development. Those are the learning tracks for the first year. And for subsequent years, we'll be introducing other learning tracks along the line. So shortly, we'll be seeing a video by Fatima, a video of Fatima Ahmed. Fatima Ahmed was one of our beneficiaries, and beneficiaries just like me, of the Women Textiles Bootcamp. So we'll watch the video and I'll come back shortly. Thank you.
My name is Fatima Mohammed. I'm from Ilarin Kora State. I studied chemistry from the University of Ilarin, but now I'm a woman in tech. Getting a job in Nigeria is very difficult. After my national youth service program, I was at home for like five to six months, writing CVs, applying for jobs, and the highest I got was callbacks, which was very frustrating. I was talking to a friend about the difficulties of getting a job in Nigeria, and he was telling me about the opportunities in tech. Coincidentally, at that time, another friend of mine was telling me about how she went to the Nigeria Men's Textiles program, where she learned how to code and build websites. Seeing what she could do, I was motivated to apply for the Nigeria Men's Textiles program. The training was for 12 weeks. I learned technical skills, um, building websites, writing codes. I also learned soft skills, communicating effectively, working in teams. It made me more effective in what I do today. Coming for the training, I just felt that, okay, I'll just learn some new skills, then have to go back home to apply for other jobs. But during the training, I started getting a lot of job opportunities. And here I am today, I have a good job, and I am glad I took the bold step to come for the Nigeria Men's Texas training. I currently work as a technical support engineer at Tech Experts where I provide cloud-based solutions. I want to use this opportunity to encourage other young women out there who are looking for jobs to empower themselves with tech skills and take advantage of opportunities like this. With partners like Microsoft, we've been able to train over 2,475 women in coding and deep tech skills across 12 states in Nigeria. And all this training was done for free. Over the next 10 years, we will train 5 million women across Africa by 2030. And we're looking for partners who could join us on this journey. So that was Fatima Ahmed story. Fatima Ahmed. <laughs> someone says, wow. Someone said, wow. And yeah, it's very, it's very inspiring. And you can be a woman in tech like Fatima Ahmed. You mustn't, like Adesi rightly said, you mustn't code actively to be a woman in tech. Fatima started from chemistry and now she works at Tech as part. And today we are lucky to have Patience Bello. Patience is Fatima's colleague at Tech Expert, the technical support engineer. Hi, Patience. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Continue. Thank you so much, Joy. It's um, really a privilege to be at this um, event. So yes, Fatima is actually my um, colleague, but <laughs> I'm not at the office with her at the moment. I'm working remotely. But yes, um, we actually work at Tech Expert, and this opportunity was given, the way it was given to Fatima, it was also given to me. So thank you for joining this event. Thank you. Um, please, I would like you to tell us your journey, how you started, what did you do, what trainings did you pass through, and how did you land a job at Tech Experts? Okay, thank you for this question. So I'll begin with uh, my journey into tech. Um, I studied biochemistry in the University of Lagos. So I'm highly versed in proteins, biochemical pathways, drugs. I know all of this. Then um, I finished my youth service and I started applying for jobs. I wasn't really getting jobs and I wasn't really seeing jobs for biochemistry and it was quite frustrating. And you hear stories like, oh, we don't have enough labs in Nigeria. There's, there's no slot and I was like, what's going on? So I had a, there was a friend I met in youth service. I served in Sokoto. So he told me that I should go and learn tech. And I told the boy that, how can you tell me something like that? Because tech is for people that are actually very smart. Tech is for guys. And I also referred some movies that don't you see the way they type? I don't have any idea. I don't have any clue that this suggestion is quite wrong. And the guy was like, okay he understands my view but i should just try it and he told me to register for the nigerian women's texas initiative which i did so i just went there with an open mind but on the first day that they trained us i said to myself that ah, that this is so simple that so who was lying to us who was lying to me like where are we getting the wrong understanding from and since then i 
got interested in tech i started learning how to code and build websites started watching videos then during the process of um, building on my tech skills i got um, there was an application for me to apply for the microsoft deep apprenticeship program so i applied i applied with the mindset of let me just give it a try because the requirements that they requested for i did not meet up to it they needed experienced people who could code i just said mm, let me give it a try let's see how it goes let's see how this tech journey will take me to so i got in for the microsoft deep apprenticeship program and i realized that aside coding there are so many other things you could do with tech currently right now i don't even really code again like i can't remember the last time i even like wrote some lines of codes i can't remember the <laughs> i can't remember the um, html css it's quite it has been, i've done it like i can't even remember so i realized that oh okay coding is part of it but the tech the tech world is so large like there's so many things you could do you don't even you don't even need to code to become a tech person if you because i joined the meeting when adesi came on and she explained that she doesn't even code so that's a point that to actually prove the fact that you don't need to code or you don't need to go into tech like oh i need to learn javascript i need to learn react i need to learn node.js Mm-mm. if you know it's not working for you there's so many opportunities you can actually explore in the tech world. So during my apprenticeship period in Microsoft Leap, um, we got a job um, where, okay, we directed or they partnered with um, tech experts to take us in for um, a certain period of time. So we went there, the training was for um, three months. And after three months, we got a job at tech experts. So currently, what I even do in tech experts, I write some codes but it's not full coding but um when i got the job at tech Expert, i even realized that it confirmed the proof that you don't really need to be an it like sorry you don't need to be an extreme programmer to um yeah. you know go into it and it just changed my view um regarding you know tech the tech world what you see in movies what we hear because i feel it's a wrong misunderstanding a wrong communication to women and girls that it's not their field because even while i'm I try to work at tech expert. You find more male engineers than female engineers. I when you tell the female that do you want to go into bed, I know I can't be here. It's too the time is too hard for me. They haven't even explored it, and that's like the barrier. So I'm glad that I got this opportunity. I'm glad that um, I was exposed to see that it is actually not hard, and there's so many other things you could explore in the tech world. So yeah, as I got started my tech journey. Yeah, thank you very much. So what skill did you acquire from the Women Texas Bootcamp? And why did you go for that learning track? Okay, so um, when I joined um, the training bootcamp, it taught us about web development, it taught us about some, like, it was basic, but that was just all I needed to just, you know, set my expectations up. They taught us basic coding, like how to build website. They taught us the manual way, how to run, um, how to write HTML code, how to run it, how to check on the website. And I was like, ah, this thing is simple. Is this what is going on? Oh my God. So I was so excited. And I don't know, for me, I was just excited. And if I go back to my friend who directed me, he would tell me, I told you after you were complaining before that it was hard, but it's not hard. And I told him that, oh yeah, wrong. Uh, wrong knowledge can actually mislead but uh, when i did the nigerian Women texas initiative i learned how to like build websites i started um, delving into javascript and all oh, it was on the period where i started into uh, learning javascript that was when i got the tech experts job and i had to drop <laughs> javascript <laughs> you would try that i did also i didn't really like Adesi, i didn't comprehend javascript it wasn't for me <laughs> <laughs> but after after my moment Texas training, I went on to start learning Python, you know, along the line. And then I just had to switch paths into the development space because that has been something I've been passionate <laughs> about. Oh, yeah, so great. nice to say that really you mustn't even be in the core tech to even to actually be a woman in tech. There are other opportunities that are there, just like you rightly said. So I wanna ask, between learning by yourself, like being self-taught and learning within the tech community, which I know you've learned within the tech community, which is an enjoyment at Texas Bootcamp, which would you advise women here to go to go for? Okay, so I would advise them to um, make it a hybrid approach in that you self-teach yourselves and at the same time, you also get help from other people because you can't actually know it all. 
you can't do yeah. it alone so there are instances where i remember when i was learning how to code and i was trying to debug and you've looked at the codes it's not running and you're just frustrated and then you call on another person and it'll be like oh there's a full stop here that's why and you're like oh my god i didn't see this and you know so you self teach yourself it's you have to combine a hybrid approach you cannot just do it you know some people have done it successfully they are along the line they see how to call on people because as far as i'm concerned if you want to self-teach yourself that means in the flip in the flip side you're going to write your own books you're going to create your own videos but if you're going to watch people's videos i'm telling you you're actually learning from another community so it's a joint approach so i feel you should merge both of them together but there's some things you have to do you have to do like the hard work yourself you have to like you know practice and all of that but at the same time it's also good to maybe get an online network community where you can reach out to and just tell that oh i need help please can somebody help me review this can you train me in this how can i push my website on github i'm watching the videos and i'm it looks like rocket science and people will come in and provide their own little ideas and it helps you to even grow faster so i feel it should be mixed not separately the way you mentioned online community lucky for this set the women texas bootcamp is going online so there'll be an online and there'll be on site there'll be a blend of both of them you know going on at the same time across africa so they have an opportunity. I remember during my own time, I had to go there. We had to pay our fees, you know, pay your transports, go to the venue, mm-hmm. and then learn, and then go back home and practice, you know. But yeah. now with, with the internet, really being in a community is very, very important because with the internet, you could also watch videos online. But when you have, there are some life questions that you need somebody to put you through, like those YouTube videos might just generalize, you know, yeah, in general. Very but, true. Like when you're at the bug, they cannot see your code. You can like, <laughs> oh, how do I do this? You know, so yeah, I agree with you. Being a community and also learning on your own is very, very important. So if I ask you, what one advice do you have for women who are considering a career in tech? Okay, so my first advice for women that are considering going to tech is um you have to drop a lot of ideas and mindsets. Yeah. For me, my own mindset was <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> it was it was hard in my mind already. But yeah. I just got advice that you know you have to come to an open mind. Even along the line while I was learning and practicing, it was still looking hard and the former mindset of this thing is not for you. Don't you watch movies? Don't you see the way they hack into maybe CIA? Who are you? Ordinary hello world, you can't even run. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I won't go back to the old. So I feel that you should yeah. drop their the the wrong mindset or wrong education or wrong training and then have you have an open mind. If you're trying to learn how to code, maybe you're trying to learn how to, um, if you're trying to learn how to write JS or maybe do React or there's so many I can't remember right now. But and you're not getting it. Calm down. Just make sure that you're determined to get this. You will actually know it if you want to. It might take you a while. It might take a lot yeah. of trials and all. But if you have that determined mind, and also there's another thing you should. Um, I feel you shouldn't miss the line on. If you see that you're not getting it, tech is extremely wide. So many people that do not code, but they control the tech field. There's so many sure. people. So you can actually, um, because what I tell people that, and that thing again, if you want to get answers, you have to look for them. The internet is there. You could actually just Google search and say, what other fields can I do aside code in tech? You will see a lot of options that you'll be like, oh, so you mean this is here? So you mean I don't even need to code to do this? Okay. So it could also open your mind to more opportunities in tech fields. So having a determined mindset, dropping the old traditional mindset also would help you. And just realize that everybody is equal, both man and woman. So it's not for men only. A woman can also do it and can do it well. That's what I have. I love that last line. The woman can also do it and can do it well. Thank you very much, Patience. Thank you for showing us that there are so many vast opportunities in tech for women like me and you and every other person that is on this call. You know, so thank you very much. I'm so grateful. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So to our viewers, to everybody out there joining us, you could be tech enablers like Adeze and I, or be like Fatima and Patience who decided to be in the core tech space. So somebody asked me, when is the bootcamp this year? Don't worry, stay on the call. We'll be giving out, we'll be announcing some 
juicy, juicy, juicy activities for the year very soon. Um, somebody now said, okay, yeah, just calm down. I'll run you through the program activities right now. So for this year, like I said, we're going into five countries. We'll be um, implementing the Women Tester Initiative in Nigeria again, in South Africa, in Egypt, in Ghana, in Kenya. So for that person that said that she do, she's not in Nigeria, but she really wants to participate, this event, this um, trainings are online and we have the offline programs too. So in case you cannot join the one within your local community, there's you, you could also um, enroll for the Women Texas events happening online, the virtual Women Texas events. So the program activities for this year would be open days. We have open days like this. Open days will happen every month. At the open days, you get to learn about the different tracks you can explore in tech. And from the session, you, you I, I know you must have heard that not every woman in tech is a programmer. So you need to demy, at the open day will demystify that no, notion for you and make sure you attend, invite your sisters and your friends and your daughters and even your mothers. It's not late. There's no time restriction to learning tech. And, and then we have the master classes. Master classes are professional um, sessions where a professional would literally hold your hands and take a deep dive into several topics that were taught during the boot camp until you become a master. Just as the name implies, like it's a, a, a class where you attend and you'll be trained on a particular topic and you become an expert. Surely if you're considering a career in tech, look out for our master classes. So there'll also be a boot camp. Yes, the boot camp is starting in April. The first boot camp is starting in April, but the call for applications will roll out in March. So the boot camp is a four week intensive training. During my time, it was two weeks, but now we're, we're extending the curriculum and it's going to be for four weeks and it takes you from novice to an intermediate level. So don't worry, or you don't have an, even if you think that, oh, you don't have a background in tech, you don't know how to code, you don't know this, you don't know that, don't worry. Not all the learning tracks are core tech, um, core tech skills that um, require you to code. Some of them like product design that Adese um, does, doesn't require you to code anymore. So the bootcamp, We'll take you from novice to the intermediate level and with the boot camp you can gain access to entry level job opportunities just like i did i finished the boot camp i went on um, an internship and then i got my first job i didn't need any I, I didn't need to take any degree course so even going to tech so you can get entry level jobs and after the boot camp there's three months of internship you will place an internship at different um startups, different tech companies across um, Nigeria. And it's an opportunity to develop relevant tech skills and skills, jumpstart your career, or even start your own startup. We have somebody, we have people that have passed through the Women's Access Bootcamp and they found their own startups today. And then there is also the fellowship. The fellowship is something we're introducing for the first time this year. It's a one year long program because being a master at a topic is not enough. When you go through the fellowship program, when you go through the fellowship program, you will learn um, several skills for a period of 12 months. It's going to be executed over a period of 12 months and there are different learning tracks. I mentioned product design, product management, data science and artificial intelligence engineering, um, cyber security and software development. So you have the choice to um, go into any of these um, learning trials I mentioned, and as Dira mentioned earlier, we would offer you advisory services, would advise you and would lead you because sometimes people get confused. It's better for you to get advice along the line. So you don't go and go for a learning track and you don't have the skill sets for that learning track. So the first six must be trainings. And after the, the core trainings, there'll be a step down step and um, soft skills training to help you stay employable and, and stay employed because it's not enough to get a job. You still need some skills to remain employable, you know, like emotional intelligence, just some skills for the workplace. So after the first six months, there'll be um, another six months for, for you to gain experience, relevant experience while interning within selected top tech organizations. After the internship, 
some of you would gain access direct employment at those companies. We've had testimonies of people who have passed through our programs. We have interns that were retained. And even if you're not retained, there'll be career fairs. And I assure you, at the end of the program, there's no way you'll be trained for a month and you won't get a job. There's no way you would be trained for a job and you won't even start your own um, tech startup. You'll be able to found your startup. With boot camps, people are founding from um, their own tech startups. How much more for someone that passes through a fellowship program? Other related activities of Women Texas this year will be mentorship program. There'll be a demo day. There'll be a mentorship program. You paired with a mentor. You will not be alone all through your learning. Somebody that has gone ahead. People like um, Adeze. People like Patience, like Fatima that have gone that have gone ahead to you know establish their own forte in tech would hold you by the hands, they will guide you, to, um, advise you all through the program. There'll be career fairs for you to meet recruiters and assess job opportunities. So those are the activities for this year. Um, please, if you have not dropped your, you've not filled your attendance, please fill the attendance form because we will need to keep you updated. We need to give you information, you know, and please don't be selfish with what you've learned today, all that you've heard today, don't be um, selfish pass down this information to your friends, to your sisters, to your mothers, to your daughters. Okay, um, someone asked if it's a paid boot camp. I would have asked um, patients that question, but I'm also a beneficiary of the Women Textiles Initiative. None of these activities, none of these programs are paid for. They are free. You don't have to pay anything. I When I went through my boot camp, I would never ask for a dime. The only thing that you might need is just your laptop. And even if you don't have, when I started out, I didn't have a laptop, I borrowed from a friend. So you can borrow from a friend, as long as you are willing to put in the time, you can borrow from a friend and, you know, take the training, you understand? So you don't really even have to have these things, but you have, you can meet people, you can talk to your friends, get a laptop, you don't need to pay any money. We have um, funding partners, we've partnered with Microsoft. Microsoft is a major funder of the Women Texas Initiative, and we have other technical partners that have joined hands with us to ensure that 5 million women are trained over the next 10 years. So there's a link there for you to fill your attendance. Please fill your attendance. Okay, I'll be inviting YMC Aro Shafe to make other announcements. And um, thank you very much for staying so far. Please wait for the announcements. That's the, that's the, the cocoa, like that's the most important part of this whole thing, all the things we'll say. So wait for the announcement. MEC will make the announcement and let you know every other thing that you need to know about the Women Textiles Initiative. Thank you very much. Let me see. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Yemi uh, Thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. It has been a wonderful session. I learned so much even from my Adeze's um, talk to patients. I hope that this session has been worthwhile for you and you have had answers to your questions. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. If you can hear me, just type yes in the chat. So if you are yet to take the attendance, kindly do so now. It's a short attendance form, just your name, um, your email address. It will take you less than a minute to complete. So we'll be out of here in less than five minutes. So please take the attendance now. I have put the attendance link in the chat. So just as Joy has previously mentioned, the call for applications for the Women Texas Fellowship will kick off in February. The program will start in March and it will be a year long program. So we're going to be releasing the call for applications um, via our social media pages. So you'll be kept up to date on that information. And the bootcamp, the first bootcamp will kick off in in March, that's um, in two months' time, and the training will start in April. And I'm sure that by now you have an idea of the activities you would like to apply for. If you need any further clarifications, you can send us an email at inquiries at techfordev.com or via our social media pages. I'm going to drop that in the in the chat box now so that you can see that. So our social media pages are we are at Tech for Dev on Facebook and Instagram and at Tech for Dev HQ on Twitter. So if you aren't already following us, please do so. 
um, so that you can stay on top of any information from us. Once again, thank you so much for being here today.